Welcome to part two of the lesson on graphing functions by potting points. In example two, we want to graph the function f of x equals x squared minus three, where the input is x and the output is f of x. And notice how the function rule is f of x subtracts three from the square of the input. To graph this function by potting points, we'll complete the table below, where we'll first select the inputs, which will be the x values, and then find the corresponding outputs, which will be the function values, f of x. So we'll first select the input values, find the corresponding output values, then write the ordered pairs, and then plot the points given by the ordered pairs on the Cartesian plane provided. Because we find the inputs along the horizontal axis, let's try to find points on the left where the inputs are negative, as well as on the right where the inputs are positive. So we'll select both positive and negative input values, or x values. So let's use, let's say, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. If we assume the axes are scaled by ones, the maximum output on the vertical axis would be positive eight, and the minimum output would be negative eight. So if we find outputs or function values that are more than positive eight, or less than negative eight, then the points given by the ordered pairs would not appear on the Cartesian plane. If that does occur, we may want to come back and change our inputs. So we'll first find the output when the input is negative two. To do this, we substitute negative two for x here and here in the function rule. So when the input is negative two, the output is f of negative two, which is equal to the square of negative two minus three. So f of negative two is equal to, the square of negative two is negative two times negative two, which is positive four. And then we have minus three. So f of negative two is equal to positive one. So when the input is negative two, the output is one, and the ordered pair is negative two comma one. The next input is negative one, so the corresponding output is f of negative one, which is equal to the square of negative one minus three. The square of negative one is one, and one minus three is equal to negative two. So f of negative one equals negative two, which means when the input is negative one, the output is negative two, and the ordered pair is negative one comma negative two. The next input is zero, so the corresponding output is f of zero, which is equal to the square of zero minus three. F of zero is equal to zero minus three, which equals negative three. So when the input is zero, the output is negative three, and the ordered pair is zero comma negative three. The next input is one, so the corresponding output is f of one, which is equal to the square of one minus three. So f of one is equal to one minus three. F of one is equal to negative two. So notice how the input of negative one and positive one both have an output of negative two. Here the ordered pair is one comma negative two. The next input is two, so the corresponding output is f of two, which is equal to the square of two minus three. So f of two is equal to the square of two, or two squared is four. Four minus three is equal to one. So f of two equals one, which means when the input is two, the output is one, and the ordered pair is two comma one. Notice how the input of negative two and two both have an output of positive one. And the final input is three, so the corresponding output is f of three which equals the square of three minus three. So f of three is equal to three squared is nine. So f of three is equal to nine minus three, which equals six. So when the input is three, the output is six, and the ordered pair is three comma six. Now going to our Cartesian plane, notice how the axes are not labeled or scaled, and therefore we can assume they're scaled by ones, but to be clear, we can also include tick marks and scale the axes by ones. Let's do that. Because the input variable is x and the output is f of x, we can label the horizontal axis x and the vertical axis f of x. And the first ordered pair is negative two comma one. So to plot this point, we know the input is negative two and the output is positive one. So we can go straight to negative two on the horizontal axis where the input is negative two or if we start at the origin, we move left two units to where the input is negative two. From here, because the output is positive one, we go up one unit to where the output is positive one. Notice at this point, the input is negative two, the output is positive one. The next ordered pair is negative one comma negative two. 
So we first go to negative one on the horizontal axis where the input is negative one, and then because the output is negative two, we go down two units to where the output is negative two. The next order pair is zero comma negative three, so we first go to zero on the horizontal axis, which is right here at the origin, but because the output is negative three, we go down three units to where the output is negative three. The next order pair is one comma negative two, so we start at one on the horizontal axis where the input is one, because the output is negative two, we go down two units. At this point, the input is one, the output is negative two. The next order pair is two comma one, so because the input is two, we begin at two on the horizontal axis, and because the output is positive one, we go up one unit to where the output is positive one. And the final order pair is three comma six, so because the input is three, we begin at three on the horizontal axis, and because the output is six, we move up six units here to where the output is six. So the graph of f of x must pass through these points and would look something like this. Now there are several things to notice about our function f of x. Because it is a degree two function, we call it a quadratic function and it forms the shape of what we call a parabola. Notice how the vertical intercept is this point here where it crosses and intersects the vertical axis. This point would be the point zero comma negative three. This graph also has two horizontal intercepts here and here. We can't tell the exact coordinates of these points, but notice how the horizontal intercepts both occur between one and two as well as between negative one and negative two. And notice how this graph is also symmetrical across the vertical axis, which means if we were to fold this graph across the vertical axis, it would match up perfectly with the other half. Before we go, let's verify our work on the graphing calculator. Let's first verify the table of values. To do this, we'll press y equals, clear out any old functions, enter the new function as y one equals x squared minus three. So x squared and then minus three. And our table is set up correctly from the last example, but just to be sure, if we press second window, we do want to make sure that the independent option is on automatic and the change in the table is also by ones. So if we press second graph for the table, we can check to make sure this table matches our table. And notice how it does. And now to check the graph for the standard window, which scales both axes by ones from negative 10 to positive 10, we can press zoom six just to verify it is set to the standard window and notice how this graph does match the graph we sketched by hand. Even though these axes are scaled from negative 10 to positive 10 and these axes are scaled from negative eight to positive eight, we can still tell our graph is correct. I hope you found this helpful.